welcome everyone to Discovery One session for LV Forward Conference 2019. I'm Greg Reeve. I'll facilitate this uh, session and I'll introduce our speakers. Um, we're going to have th two presentations and I'll introduce each of those speakers and after their presentations we'll do a short 10-minute uh, Q&A and then after the two presentations we'll have a panel discussion that I'll, I'll hand over to Tom Kramer and I'll introduce that uh, when we get to that point. So the first speaker we have is uh, Huda Khan and Astrid Usang. Astrid couldn't be here, but I'll introduce her as well. Uh, Huda is from Cornell University. She's a software developer and research associate. Um, she's in the LB4 grants, and she's develop, developed and contributed to the software for linked data cataloging applications. Um, Astrid's from Stanford University. They're, they're a user inter, inter, um, experience designer and they're responsible for understanding user needs for the Synopia cataloging tool, as well as researching and evaluating how to design interfaces that incorporate linked data to enhance discovery. Their, their talk is um, entitled, Discovery Interfaces Integrating Linked Data. So give, let's give them a warm welcome. Thanks, Greg. First time I've had a grand so what I'll be talking about is um, the work and uh, questions that we're exploring in the Linked Data Pathways for Promotion or LD4P Blueprint around how we can integrate linked data into our discovery systems. We're focusing on block life, but the lessons we're learning and the questions we're asking can be applicable to any number of particular implementations. And discovery systems contain multiple components so, um, and areas, so you want to know what data, um, you'll be bringing in, you want to know how to index it, and then how to also present it in the interface. This talk will not uh, focus on all of the components. Um, I'll be focusing on the design issues uh, around how and when to integrate data to help users to uh, discover our content. Um, so I guess one question that I tend to ask myself when I put together a presentation is why anyone would care about what I'm talking about. Um, I know that there is a lot of work and thought and research that goes into our library catalog systems. That said, I think there is definitely still room for improvement and enhancement. We can do better to allow people to find our resources, our special collections, um, and understand what they're looking at. Um, and sometimes when I say these things, people, some people will say, well, we don't want the library catalog to be Google. Google already exists. Our users already go there. Um, uh, we shouldn't be Google, that's a different um, problem. But, so, in, in, to, to answer that, I want to kind of go over sort of why we say these things and what our current expectations are and where we would like to go. So, most people say, well, our, all our students go to Google anyway. And uh, I actually spoke to my niece over break um, to actually work and say, can you tell me how you do uh, search and discovery? And one of her examples was she's looking for a particular topic. She goes to her search engine, she types in the topic. In the process of looking at the results, she's not simply looking for articles, which is of course a big thing, but also what particular types of concepts and research areas there are, what interesting references and resources there may be. Um, so for instance, if she's looking for mining, what are the types of mining, are there regions that are important? And um, search engines like Google do provide lots of you know, related searches, related suggestions, information about authors and concepts. But our current expectation in the library catalog world is that this is where people go to do the heavy lifting of their discovery work. And by the time they end up at the library catalog, they have a title in mind, or fairly close. So at this point, they're, they're doing the known item problem. They're looking for a particular title. Maybe they're looking for an author or a subject. But really, they just want to get that thing and figure out what library they can check it out in. Um, and though this is a use case we should support, um, as we're researching in this particular grant, we're seeing that uh, the open-ended and more exploratory tasks that people tend to sort of shift to the search engine, there's room for that and there's a need for that in our library catalog systems. So even if we can't be Google, um, I should say that there's still a way to be a very valuable and important player in the discovery lifecycle. So why do I have to slide up? In 1996, Snapple had an ad where they said that we're not competing with the number one and number two colas. Um, they uh, were not going to be the first or the second. Um, and this actually gives us the flexibility to figure out what flavors we would like to give to our clientele. So I would say we can be number three and that's fine, 
um, as long as we can understand how to support our users and be a valuable player. So the, the tasks and questions that we're looking at are um, issues around context, um, providing information around similar works and instances, um, what are the things that people can search, what are the, the keywords and topics they can search if you use it, and how they, can we connect these back to our own digital and special collections in better ways. So in short, how can we support more open-ended discovery using like, data and bringing in external data from other sources? The way that we're approaching this uh, question, uh, one of the, the main components of the process is the user-centered design process. And I won't go into this whole slide, but uh, the important things to note is that we try to leave our assumptions at the door, we try to actually talk to our users, and it's an iterative process where you design something or experiment with it, and then you go back and evaluate so that you can keep learning. So as a first step, Astrid Song couldn't be here, um, our UX specialist for this project at Stanford, did some user research. Um, she interviewed um, both graduate students and researchers and faculty, and some undergraduates. And she did find that there were some differences between these two particular populations. Again, um, if you do have the slides in the shared folder so you can go look at the details, um, one thing that um, stood out for everyone was that the language that we use to query things and the taxonomy or ontology or vocabulary that we use in the catalog um, are not the same. And there needs to be some help with mapping or translating that. Um, Undergraduate researchers um, or undergraduate students also need more help understanding which terms to use and um, what concepts are looking at. Yes, they do tend to start at Google, but we already know that. Um, so we are trying to focus on the undergrads or the inexperienced researchers a little more to see what kind of help we can get them. Using um, the work that we did, Astrid created some mock-ups uh, to try to flesh out some of the design of where we could go with these ideas. So in this particular mock-up, you see that um, our user has typed in symbols and she's trying to find um, information about ancient Egyptian paintings. And uh, there's a narrow and broader search that allows her to see what other concepts are related and what, how she might be able to refine her search. Vocabulary terms that can help her further refine and understand what particular terms could be useful. Course guides, because this was something that students did point out that could be um, an interesting resource. And then digital and special collections at the library, as well as resources outside the library. Um, we often have very interesting things that could provide content and context to our users, and we should uh, be able to um, direct them there. So as we're looking at linked data, and as we're looking at uh, the kinds of relationships that we want to bring in, um, we're experimenting with <coughs> ideas around how can we show the user related works, such as editions and translations? Um, can we bring in citations? Can we bring in information about works in the series? This is all to help them sort of situate this particular item, but also to help them navigate to other works and kind of get a better sense of what does this landscape around this work look like, and is there something more to my, um, that fits, uh, more relevant to my search that I can find. And the related authors information is, is pretty useful if you want to, related authors and works, is useful if you want to do a bibliography. There is a small knowledge panel, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, this provides uh, information about the, the author they're looking at and the other works that they have um, created. So we, uh, Astrid and, um, I will forget her name, Alexandra Krogman at Stanford University um, did some testing with knowledge panels um, with undergrads and found that uh, they generally liked them quite a bit. They thought that um, having this information, not just a picture, but some contextual information about this person, their research, um, what they're doing, uh, provided credibility and allowed them to see what other um, navigation pathways they could take. So that's a sort of a quick re recap of the UX work we've done so far. We're also continuing to explore additional uh, questions. There are also additional areas of the grant around semantic search and browsing. Um, but as we try to step back and think about what tasks are users actually trying to accomplish, um, here are some of the questions we're thinking about. And I'll go through some examples. Um, and the way that we will be trying to evaluate these is we will prototype and experiment and evaluate them throughout the course of the grant. 
So the knowledge panel example I showed you earlier um, was a mock-up that showed um, information. Uh, this is a, an experiment actually trying some of this out, and Jesse Keck will talk more about this later um, at his work at Stanford. But this shows that you have a little knowledge panel with uh, information about Jane Austen, and this is experimenting with relationships specifically. So can we find out what notable works uh, Jane Austen had, and who, what other authors she might have influenced? And on the right-hand side, you have editions and translations and other works that have been derived. The idea here is that we should be able to tie this back to what's within the library catalog. So that's a, a big question of how do we integrate this back uh, so the user can see that, yes, in fact, uh, Margaret Atwood has 36 things within our catalog. And if that doesn't exist, how do we design around that? I'm going to mention um, some work we've done uh, around cataloging editors in this grant to show that there may be ideas that we can take that we've already been looking at uh, for catalogers. So uh, we were working on trying to see how we could help catalogers disambiguate authors and pick the right subject heading. So this is um, where the cataloger is looking for a particular author. They get information in but they, uh, from the Library of Congress, but they also have information they can see within the screen from other data sources. Um, and this could provide interesting and useful context. Could we do something like this for our users? And um, how, would, how would it help them? Uh, for genre forms, which are sub similar subject headings, um, catalogers do navigate the hierarchy to figure out exactly what the best fit should be. So this was um, a uh, mock-up where we were trying to see how we could graphically represent this information in a way that quickly gives catalogers an idea of where this particular uh, genre form is in the hierarchy and what's broader and narrower. Um, is there something similar we could do for uh, discovery and for our end users and for library catalogs? So as we're looking at uh, bringing in uh, lift data into cataloging, another uh, point where we could uh, reuse some of the work we've done is the work we're doing with Discogs. Discogs is not a link data source, but our colleagues uh, Tim Worrell and Lynette Rail and uh, Dave Eichmann have been working on creating a, like a link data funnel for it. So you can um, ask for information about Discogs and get it back as link data. And this should help catalogers because it could help populate the form. But since we have that and we have a mock-up by Astrid that shows what this might look like in a catalog context, is there work that we can reuse and um, integrate for our end users? So this shows um, the track listing coming from Discogs on an item view, um, a sound recording. So knowledge panels and um, integrating data um, in the sort of search and display um, views is one, is one idea. What about search itself? Tim Worrell at Cornell has been experimenting with hooking up our autocomplete to Wikidata. So these are examples of putting in terms like Egyptology and Gettysburg Address and Lincoln and you are then able to find some terms you can search by. The challenge again here is ensuring this actually ties back to something in the library because you don't want to give people a term that leads nowhere. Another possible use for this kind of information is if you, have, um, you don't have any results to the search you did do, this could provide alternate suggestions or additional suggestions for you to look for. Um, Jesse Keck will talk about this more in his uh, knowledge panel um, session, but um, in addition to information about authors and works, uh, there might also be, uh, and I think there, there should be a place for geographical and temporal information to be brought in. So in this case, uh, the user has done a search already, and they can see that the results um, apply to specific uh, regions, so if they were to then click on Egypt, this knowledge panel shows them information about the country um, and also where it's located within the map. And Jesse will show a live demo that will look much better than this. But um, are there ways of navigating maps and navigating geographical relationships and showing items related to particular regions that we could um, work on? So all this to say that uh, you know, there's, these are sort of a, a recap of some of the ideas we've worked on so far. And we still have other ideas and questions to explore. And we'd love to hear uh, from some of you about what you would think we should do. 
But this is all to try to move towards a more integrated ecosystem. So the first slide showed us sort of kind of hanging out alone on the right-hand side where people only come to us once they have a title. Um, what if we lived in a world where things were a little more balanced and the search engine results um, actually tied back to the library catalog results, sent the users there. But when the users got to our library catalog, um, they, they could have the option to try and navigate the content there in ways that uh, could be more relevant to them. And they could find digital collections and special collections at the library that were relevant to their searches, and they could see how a particular item or author related to all of the other items um, in the catalog, as well as uh, bringing in data and context which search engines are already using. We could also utilize that in our in our situation. I think that would be helpful. So it would be nice, and I have to credit Stephen Wilson <laughs> for this, um, if we could, in fact, we don't need to be number one and number two um, in the user's um, discovery workflow, but we could be a solid number three. Uh, there are still questions around um, the kinds of um, tasks that we could do. Um, I think uh, from the talks this morning and a question that I've been mulling about um, since I heard uh, Stacey Allison's talk last year is, are there um, special collections and information about communities that we could somehow connect between the libraries and what's out there in Wikidata? Are there things we can contribute back to allow for people to discover information about communities that um, they may not otherwise have? So another question is that um, when the data is not present, um, how are we going to uh, handle interface design there? And what kind of properties and data sources do we think um, would provide the most benefit for our users? And Greg actually said, stop, please, like 10 seconds ago, but I kept going, so that's it. <laughs> So this, we have some time here for Q and A. Um, if you have a question or want to ask about Huda's uh, presentation, feel free to grab a mic, and there'll be some roaming mics as well. Um, Andrew Hayes from RCLC. I had a quick question about the knowledge card usability testing you were talking about. Is any of that published and available anywhere? There are links um, in the slides to okay. the wiki pages or the Google Doc that has that info. Oh, great. Thank you. Hi, Ruth Tillman. Um, I was wondering if there were ways you were able to test coverage of things like those knowledge cards and such. So, you know, what percentage of authors in the catalog have matches and such? Um, I'm going to look at Stephen because uh, we have been looking at that and uh, we actually do have a presentation which I can link to in the slides that goes through Stephen and some other people's extensive queries on, on just that kind of thing. So off the top of your head, do you remember what percentage? Uh, depending on how you're slicing the question, um, at least with Cornell's and both boxes, um, anybody who has a, um, a main authority record. Um, it drops pretty dramatically down to how many people are, how many of those folks in our catalog have like uh, LC authority IDs in say the data. Um, so how much we get to enhance the graph depends on those connections and the reconciliation and representation. I think that response might actually have been getting to at least parts of my question. When I saw the interface that sucked data in from Wikidata, how much of that data that you suck in is just API query display results, and how much of that data do you actually keep to try to uh, do some statistics or analysis on the usefulness of what comes in from these like, data sources? I don't know that we've thought about keeping the data around other than for indexing, and unless Stephen has something to say about that, which is fine. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, are you saying that when the, if we, um, the examples here are all client-side 
display. So the queries are done based on the URIs you have, and then you go in and, and get that information um, real time. But are you saying, should we also analyze the data that comes back from the queries? Uh, I'm not going to go so far today to say it should, but I can see that as sort of a possibility, uh, especially for analyzing and making the arguments to people with first strings about why we should be using legal data this way. Okay. They like numbers. <laughs> they like statistics. Yeah, I think Stephen and uh, Hillary Forsen's work and Christine um, as well, they've been looking at sort of coverage around that, so what entities are represented and what properties uh, can we get. But I think that's an important question. Thank you. Does anyone remember the snap a lot? Well, it's a pretty grainy out on YouTube, but you'll find it. <laughs>